Hi everyone. Sorry that I've been away, but you know I was busy with studies, work, finishing a novel, things like that. Anyway, today I'm going to talk about the Magicians series by Les Grossman. This is something I bought way back in December during the Big Bad Wolf sale. I thought maybe it's time to give it a try, especially since the Magicians TV series came to iFlix, which is our form of Netflix, way down here in Southeast Asia and Malaysia. So, what did I think about it? Hmm. If you want, just a bit of background about the books. The Magicians is about a 70 year old boy called Quentin who discovers that magic is real. He gets invited to study in an academy of magic. And he also discovers that the books he obsessed over as a kid, it's like um, something like Narnia, uh, is real. It's called Fillory. So, if you're wondering, Wow, this, the plot sounds really familiar. Um, I can't blame me because it is familiar. In fact, the author I read um, sort of wrote this sort of to disc- deconstruct the fantasy genre and to comment about it. You know, I mean, it's about how life doesn't work like books. And, and this, you know, if these things were real, how would it work like in real life? Well, so what did I think about the books? Well, <clears throat> these are the books. Uh, I'm not in love with it. You know, I really, in fact, I really hated the first book. Really, really hated the first book. Um, my main problem is that there is no story structure to begin with. Unlike the TV series, which I thought was much better structured, the book had a very flat plot line, you know, you see Quentin learning spell after spell after spell in school and my head, my head kept going, oh my gosh, this is so like Harry Potter, I just couldn't get out of it. Even though I knew that this was a commentary on the Harry Potter genre, I still didn't enjoy that, I just felt that it was so unnecessary. And besides, even if you wanted to disconstruct the fantasy genre, you could do it in an interesting way. And it wasn't interesting, it wasn't even entertaining and I wasn't really sure why I read it well actually I read it because I like the TV series to a point I mean I didn't think that it was a fantastic series uh, but it had all the right elements in place what the TV series did was to sort of lift up certain plot elements from the book and put it all in the right order for example Julia's story Julia is Quentin's best friend she never got invited to study in an academy of magic because she flunked the test. Um, her story appeared in book two. But in a TV series, it was put side by side with Quentin's. So you can see how a formally trained magician learns and um, informally magician learns. And I remember watching the TV series and thinking, you know, uh, they're doing all this magic stuff, dangerous magic stuff. And the the college did such so little to prevent these kids from destroying the world as we know it. I mean, and I was just thinking, wow. But yeah, if there's one message that is loud and clear in this book, is that magic is dangerous and in the hands of whiny teenage entitled brats, it's dangerous. Okay, so by some miracle, despite me hating the first book, I still read the second book. I think because I was, I wrote, I mean, I, I bought three books. I felt like, oh my gosh, I have to read all these books. Even though I have a policy about um, DNFing a book, you know, I do DNF very brutally. I just felt like, oh gosh, I just have to complete these novels. I feel so, um, I don't know, there's a word in my language that says, uh, oh well, I, I just wanted to finish it, you know. So I did, and I found that I liked The Magician's King better than The Magician's, ironically. I didn't think I would, but I actually enjoyed it better because the second book is uh, structured much better. There was actually a rising tension for one. Um, Though I just felt that um, the big bad wasn't very, again, very clear. And there was a scene towards the end where there was this huge, horrific event that happened to Julia, and then felt as if it didn't, it wasn't foreshadowed properly, so you didn't expect it to appear. So some people actually got really 
mad when uh, it happened. Well, luckily I watched a TV series, so... <laughs> and in the TV series, it's really properly foreshadowed, you know, like... Um, they were t you have these odd moments where you feel like, oh, is what Julia... Is what she's doing okay, you know? They, they foreshadowed how dangerous her magic was and her root was. And you felt that where she was going is not going to end up good. But in the book, not quite, you know? Um, yeah. Anyway, even though I liked the second book better, I still didn't quite enjoy it, you know? I just... I just read it because I just had to. <laughs> and frankly, I needed a break before reading the third book. I just felt that I needed to read something else. So I'll post a video of the third novel later. Hopefully things will get better, though I don't think so. <laughs> Quentin is far more tolerable towards the end of book two, but maybe it's too late for me. I just don't really like the character much. Uh. But if there's any, um, if there's one thing good about it is that Grossman writes well. His prose is good. That's about as much as I can think to say about the book, really. Okay, thanks for watching. Do subscribe if you can. And I'll be back later for more reviews.